Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy. Your Excellency Peter Chen, Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Mr. Thomas Leos, a Chairperson of the Youth Economy Agency. Honorable Wayne Girard, Minister and the Minister of Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy. Mr. Brian Vidal, Chief Executive Officer of the Youth Economy Agency. Mrs. Crystal Revere, Chief Operating Officer of the Youth Economy Agency. Mr. Daniel Lee, always welcome, Chief of the Taiwan Technical Mission. Mr. Imran Williams, Director of Finance. Is your first time visiting us physically, Imran? No? You've been there before? I must have missed you on your previous uh, occasion. Ms. Pearl Alcindor, this is your first occasion visiting us. Uh, welcome, Deputy Chief Economist. Ms. Tara Regis-Prince, Director of the Youth Economy Agency. Ms. Elsie Tsai, Third Secretary, Republic of China, Taiwan. Mr. Louis So, Project Manager, Community Business Revitalization Project, Taiwan Technical Mission. Mr. Yong Lang Yang, Project Manager, Women Empowerment Project, Taiwan Technical Mission. Mr. Poe Lee, Project Assistant, Taiwan Technical Mission. Mr. Stanislaus Bishop, Communications Specialist, Taiwan Technical Mission. Somewhere about the place. Members of staff of the Youth Economy Agency, Taiwan Technical Mission, and of course, uh, representatives of the Government of St. Lucia, representatives of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the offices of the Youth Economy Agency and welcome to this auspicious occasion, the signing ceremony for what promises to be yet another important instrument demonstrating and exemplifying the partnership between the governments of St. Lucia and the Republic of, Chi of China, Taiwan, through the Youth Economy Agency. To officially welcome you to our premises this morning and to this occasion, it is my pleasure to introduce our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Brian Vidal. Good morning, and thank you very much, Terry. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and partners. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you here today for the signing of this technical cooperation agreement between the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, represented by the Taiwan Technical Mission in St. Lucia and the Youth Economy Agency. This collaboration marks a significant milestone in our ongoing efforts to empower our youth, foster entrepreneurship, and create a more inclusive economy. In our short existence of only one year, this is the second time we are receiving assistance from our friends from Taiwan. So we just want to say a special thank you. I would like to extend my gratitude to the representatives of the Taiwan Technical Mission and His Excellency Ambassador Peter Chen. Your commitment to supporting our young people is not only a testament to the enduring friendship between our nations, but also a powerful catalyst for growth and the opportunity here in St. Lucia. Thank you for your dedication and vision. Permit me also to recognize our Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Minister of Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security. And also the other cabinet ministers, I see Mr. Wayne, Honorable Wayne Girard. And I just want to mention, you know, that the youth economy really represents the vision of the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable um, Philip J. Pierre. And, you know, the very fact that, the, that he's here with us this morning, it's sentiment, you know, to his support, you know, for the youth of St. Lucia. So I just want to say a special thank you to the Prime Minister for that. I mean, we really appreciate your presence. I mean, know you had a conflicting schedule, but you made it your duty to come here. So thank you very much. Um, we were also expecting the Honorable Jeremiah Norbert, who is the, um, res the minister responsible for crime prevention and persons with disabilities. Um, in his absence, I know that he also had another um, engagement. But we just want to say, you know, that, um, you know, at the youth economy, we'll make a special you know, effort to reach out to persons who are specially, specially able, you know, to ensure that they are not left out in this wonderful opportunity. Today's agreement will lead to transformative outcomes. With the support of the Taiwan Technical Mission, 210 youth will have the opportunity to participate in advanced training workshops, equipping them with the skills they need to succeed in a rapidly evolving economy. They will also receive training in investments 
which will lay the foundation for a more financially literate and empowered generation. Moreover, the agreement will provide a unique opportunity for young entrepreneurs to represent St. Lucia at the prestigious Global Youth Trends Forum in Taiwan, an event that will not only expand your horizons but also create viable networking opportunities. Additionally, 420 youth will gain access to angel funds with grants of up to 1,000 EC. This financial support will empower them to launch or scale their businesses, driving innovation and creating jobs within the micro, small, and medium enterprise sector. These initiatives are not just about providing resources. They are also about building a bright future for our youth, fostering closer collaboration between agencies, engaging youth development, and ultimately contributing to the economic growth of our nation. So essentially, with those funds we'll be receiving, we'll engage our partners, those who are passionate about you know, youth development and passionate about the micro, small, and medium sector. As we sign this agreement today, let us remember that we are laying the groundwork for a better tomorrow. Our youth are our most precious resource, and by investing in them, we are investing in a more prosperous and inclusive St. Lucia. Thank you once again for our partners from Taiwan Technical Mission, to our Prime Minister and everyone involved in making this collaborative collaboration possible. Together, let us continue to work towards a brighter future for our youth and for our nation. Thank you, and let us proceed with our ceremony. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Brian. This uh, occasion, of course, gives us the opportunity to continue demonstrating uh, the versatility, the agility, and the flexibility that we have shown over the past year. And of course, our somewhat limited space here allows us to show our physical flexibility and agility as well. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce our chairperson uh, of the Youth Economy Agency, Mr. Thomas Leons, to deliver some brief remarks. Minister. Honorable Philippe Jepier, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Minister for Finance, Economic Development, National Security, and Youth Economy, His Excellency Ambassador Peter Chen, Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan. I see my name there, but I'm going to call it. So. Uh, Honorable Wayne Girard. Minister in the Minister of Finance, in the Ministry of Finance, sorry, Economic Development and the Youth Economy. Mr. Brian Vidal, Chief Executive Officer of the Youth Economy Agency. Mrs. Christelle Rivier, Chief Operations Officer of the Youth Economy Agency. Mr. Daniel Lee, Chief of the Taiwanese Technical Mission. Mr. Imran Williams, Director of Finance. Ms. Pearl Alcindor, Deputy Chief Economist. Ms. Tara Regis of the Youth Economy uh, Agency Board, Ms. Elsie Tsai, uh, Third Secretary of the Republic of China, Taiwan, uh, Mr. Louis So, I heard Terry pronounce it, okay, Project Manager, Community Development, Community Business Revitalization, sorry, Project Taiwanese Technical Mission, Mr. Yong Lang Yang, Project Manager, Women Empowerment Project, TTM, Mr. I think I had Po 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 Yili, Project Assistance of the TTM, Mr. Stan Bishop, Commerce Specialist of the TTM, members of staff of the Youth Economy Agency, um, members of staff of the TTM as well, uh, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. The Republic of China, Taiwan has kept coming through for the Youth Economy Agency, and by extension, the Youth of St. Lucia, time and time again. I know CEO said twice, but it feels like more often than that, you know? The Republic of China, Taiwan has become more than a friendly contributor to Ye, but have become more like family in a very short space of time. The initial show of confidence back in 2022 may very well have served as an impetus for other countries, agencies, and entities to get involved and to get behind the mission of the Youth Economy Agency. 
the initial contribution of the Republic of China to Taiwan, both in cash and kind, much of the furniture that you are, and equipment that you see around, including those you're sitting on, uh, was a contribution from the ROC. That played an important role in getting the operations of the Youth Economy Agency going. I think it's also fitting that I point out that it was not a case of look the money and turn their backs, but they made their presence felt and became very invested in the activities of Ye. I can still visualize um, Sophia driving up alone to Castries from Library at close to 11 p.m. after having attended one of the business mixers down in the south, as well as um, His Excellency Ambassador Chen. I see him everywhere, <laughs> which um, speaks volumes on how invested he is in the various undertakings that the Republic of China Taiwan supports, as well as other regular activities and events, such as national football games. I'm certain that since the launch of the agency over a year ago, the Honorable Prime Minister has received many a call on several fronts on how they can play a role in Ye in one form or another. Our CEO, board members, myself included, have also received calls and invitations to discuss how collaborations can be forged with the Youth Economy Agency. It's usually the case in St. Lucia that one has to beg for sponsorship of activities, which don't present many opportunities to leverage and make a big splash, especially if it does not involve food, drink, and music. So I wish to express our gratitude for this additional support. It signals that, the, that Taiwan has really stayed the course with Ye over the past several months. And we'll continue to work side by side as we endeavor to assist the young people of St. Lucia to carve out an economic space for themselves, perhaps in St. Lucia first, the sub-region, and of course, globally. So keep your eyes on this space. We shall have an abundance of fruit soon coming from those seeds that were planted, coming from those seedlings that were watered, coming from the light that was shown upon, the many, on, upon many of enterprises that the young people of St. Lucia are engaged in. I thank you. Back to Jim, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, first we had you walk the stairs and now we have you doing a little bit of limbering up. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Leos. Uh, always a pleasure to have you um, at our premises once again. Uh, and uh, to deliver some further remarks, uh, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome uh, to the rostrum the ambassador for the Republic of China, Taiwan, to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Chen. Honorable Prime Minister Felicia Pierre, Honorable Minister Wen Jira, Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development, and Youth Economy, Mr. Thomas Leung, Chairman of Youth Economy Agency, Mr. Brian Vidal, CEO of Youth Economy Agency, colleagues uh, from the YEA, officials from the Ministry, and also my colleagues from Taiwan Technical Mission, and friends from media. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's really my pleasure to attend the momentous occasion today, the signing of the agreement between Taiwan Technical Mission and Youth Economy Agency, and the celebration of a meaningful milestone for the Youth Economy Agency after its inauguration for one year. During the past 12 months, we have witnessed remarkable achievements and transformative impact of various initiatives on the lives of young solutions through a variety of interventions by providing access to funding, mentorship, network, networking opportunities, and capacity building workshops. YEA has been steadfast in its mission to nurture the entrepreneurial spirit among the youth in Sanusha. And we are glad to have a reliable and trusty partner like YEA so that the youth program between Taiwan and Sanusha can run successfully. As former U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt said, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. I think that's why we have Honorable Prime Minister and Honorable Minister Wenjira 
uh, gather here today to support the past building for our youth and our future. And I would like to comment on Honorable Prime Minister Fiji JPS pledge on youth economy and his leadership and commitment in creating an enabling environment where young entrepreneurs can strive and innovate, and where every young person has the opportunity to fulfill their aspirations. Lastly, on behalf of the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, I would like to deliver five laptops to YEA to supplement the equipment <laughs> as YEA has renovated their new office. Together with the government of St. Lucia and partnering organizations, we're looking forward to harnessing the power of youth entrepreneurship to drive innovation, create jobs, and foster sustainable economy growth in St. Lucia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for all that you have done for the Youth Economy Agency and certainly for the uh, youth of St. Lucia and for your continued partnership with the government and people of uh, St. Lucia. Now to deliver our final remarks this morning, it is uh, my absolute pleasure to introduce uh, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, Economic Development and the Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security. Let me recognize my colleague, Honorable Wayne Girard, Ambassador Cheng, Mr. Brand Vidal, CEO, Mr. Thomas Leos, Chairperson, Director of Finance, Deputy Chief Economist, members of the Taiwan Technical Mission, members of the staff of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm rather extremely pleased to be here this morning. I think it's the second time I've been here since the building has been completed. Um, I guess since the move to the, about a year ago, the first time at the opening and now at the handing of a ceremony, it's at the signing of a technical agreement. I want to thank the government of Taiwan for the investment in St. Lucia and particularly the young people of St. Lucia. And I want to, to tell you that the year ought not to be like a regular agency. I make no bones about it. Young people ought not to have to go through the rigors and the scrutiny that other people have to go through. And I make no bones about it, and I'm very firm on that. The year must be flexible. It must be transparent. Must be, but it must be accountable. And we cannot afford to have an organization where the young people have to spend the same amount of time that they have when they, when they go to a commercial bank, or the same amount of time when they have to when the same amount of time they ha when they go to a normal institution. This institution must be different. It must be revolutionary. It must go where angels fear to tread. It must take risk. It must invest in the young people of this country and it must cause them to improve their quality of life. It cannot be an institution of paper and an institution of processes and procedures that will never end. It must be accountable. It must be transparent, but it must be flexible. And young people must not suffer the frustration that they suffer when they go to other organizations. They cannot. If not, we could as well stay how we are and let them go to the bank, etc. We cannot. We have to find processes in this organization that makes it, say it again, accountable, transparent, but flexible. Young people are excited. They are impatient. That's what all of us, when we were young, right now we seem to, to forget that most of us were young. In fact, I was young a long time ago. <coughs> but we seem to forget that most of us were young, and we try to put certain strictures on young people, pretending that we were different, or pretending that they are worse than us. The difference between then and now 
is that the risk I could take, the young people now cannot take it. But young people are basically the same. They're basically the same. Right now, there are things that we accuse young people of. Not things that are nice. Some of them are true. But fact is, these things always existed, albeit in a different way and a smaller scale. And, the, and mass media exaggerates on the negatives that young people do. They exaggerate. You understand? But there are hundreds of young people who are doing very good things. There are hundreds of young people who are producing. There are hundreds of young people who want to do better. What they need is assistance, and this is what this agency must do. It must assist them in getting to their dreams. Some of them will fail. Some of them must fail. But the fact is, we must help them to try. And I'm very, I make absolutely no bones about it. This organization must be different to the regular lending institutions, must be different to the various other bodies that offer assistance to young people. We have to be different. If we're not different, it doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense. So I want to thank the government of Taiwan. I want to thank the, the Thomas Leos for accepting the, the job as chairperson. I did not know Thomas Leos before. Um, I heard of him. I didn't know him before. But I thought I would have, heard, I thought I would have entrusted him with, with that role. And truth is, I have not even communicated with him as I should. I am not. Because I trust you until you make me mistrust you. <laughs> that is basically the way I lead my life. I don't try to read anybody's minds or anybody's heart. I will not, I will not, I'll never be able to read anybody's heart, I don't try. So what's in your heart is your business. I judge you by your actions, what you do, what you produce, and how you live up to the philosophy that you signed on for. Not by your heart. Not interested in hearts. And this is how we have to deal with the young people of St. Lucia. Try not to read their hearts. Try not to read their locks or their short pants or, 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 or their vests. Try not to read it. Deal with them as to what they want and how you can assist them. Always understand that you must be transparent and accountable. So I want to thank Thomas for taking on this, this challenge. It was a, many people thought that we could never create a youth economy agency. Some of them said, you have a youth desk at the development bank, you have a youth desk at the ministry of thing, you have youth in agriculture, you have, why are you doing that? And it's Philip J. trying to build some things, trying to be a, trying to do something, you know, because people, people always try to read other people's hearts. That's a, that's a problem, you try to read hearts. What I wanted to do, I wanted to be able to create, with the help of the cabinet and the government of St. Lucia, I wanted to be able to create a special place for young people. Not the same, and I admit, I'm not, I'm not apologizing about it. The location is deliberate. I make no apologies about it, you know. The location is deliberate. We have to revive the cities of this country. We can't allow castries to die and to say that them people live in, in these spaces. We have to come to these people. All over the world now, there is regeneration. Cities have been, have been reconstituted. If you go to London, London is all the areas of London that were called ghettos, they now there. Sky, the skyscrapers in there, businesses have gone there. If you go to, to Brooklyn, parts of Brooklyn that were formerly ghettos, they now people are coming back in. We cannot afford to have the capital city of a country dying because we see them people living there. We can't. And once I have the opportunity, once the people of Cassius East first and the people of St. Lucia generally, once they give me that opportunity, I will try to see if I can revive the city of Castries. Castries cannot die. All countries 
have a capital. The capital of England is London. The capital of Taiwan is Taipei, right? right? These are capital cities. There's a tendency to want castries to die because we believe that the people who live in castries are them people. No. You have to revive castries. So this location is deliberate. I choose it and I choose it and I make no apologies for choosing it. We have to bring young people in a space. We have to be able to encourage the people who live in Black Malay and in George Charles Boulevard and in the graveyard and in Mondidon. We have to be able to tell them that there's somewhere they can come, that they can get assistance for their dreams because they have dreams too. We can't pretend only, only we have dreams. Everybody has dreams. Some of us are more fortunate. But you must give them, you must give them the opportunity. And the opportunity you have to give them in the year is to give them the grant of $1,000, $2,000 to give them an opportunity so that they can improve the quality of their life. Not judge them because of the way they look or the way they're born. Or, the way, or where they live. And this organization must not do that. It must not prejudge people because of where they come from or because of how they look. We cannot do that. We have to be different. And that is why we are in a, in a separate agency for young people only. So I want to thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for buying into the vision of making a difference to the young people of St. Lucia. The young people we want to cater for are all young people. But there are some young people who have more opportunity than others. That's a fact. And the people who have more opportunity than others may not come here. The parents will endorse a loan for them. They may join the, 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 their father's business, which is good, very good. The parents will be able to go to the bank and say, I'm going to sign for an overdraft for you to go into your business. They may be able to, but the people who will come here, the majority of them, they have no, they have no got any means of improving their lives unless they are assisted. They cannot improve their lives unless they are assisted. And that's what we are there for, to assist them, to get them to start. So we cannot measure them with the same criteria that we measure people who have a start in their life. We cannot. And I want to tell the staff in this agency that you have to be different. You can't have your staff of procedures and strictures and structures and making life very difficult for the people you have to serve. You have to be flexible. We can't be a, 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 an organization where you have to say, oh, you must meet Mr. X today, Mr. Y tomorrow, and come back next week at 8 o'clock to meet Mr. Z. We have to be flexible. We have to have discipline. We have to have discipline. We have to have organization. But we have to be flexible. And that's all I'm asking for. For flexibility, for transparency, and for giving young people a chance. Not young people who have a chance already. We must help create them. They have the same dreams. They have the same aspirations. They want the same for their children. But what they need is a little care. A little love. Not all of them will, not all of them will do well. Some of them will go by the some of them will fail. But many men have failed. Many men have failed. So I want you to continue that vision, not for me, but for the young people of St. Lucia. And it's a long time we only feed young people to talk and talk and talk and talk and tell them things that they cannot, that they will not be able to, to achieve. Tell them dreams that are impossible. But they want little things. And the $2,000 you'll give them as a grant might cause them to change their whole outlook. Cause them to change their whole, they, they will feel some level of belonging. Somebody cares about them. They can go in some office and sit down and be treated like a, like a, a, a regular person and not judged because of their, their natty and not judged because of their vest. We have to do it. We have to be flexible. 
So, Mr. Ambassador, I want to tell you that you are doing for this agency something that I cherish. I really cherish it. Because this country cannot survive if the young people in this country do not buy to a certain level of philosophy. And not a few young people, you know, all the young people must buy for it. All of us must buy, all of us must create the opportunity for young people to buy into a philosophy of, this, of being better than the next, than their parents. They must be able to do better. This generation must do better than the last generation. And the generation coming must do better than this generation. This must be the philosophical underpinning in what, in, in what we run in this country. Not a country run on frills and, and things that really don't matter. A country run on fact, a country run on philosophy, a country, a country run on the well-being of all. And I'm glad that you have the, you're using the technology. We have to try, and I've mentioned, mentioned that to the CEO, you have to try to make young people use the technology to make money for themselves. We can't have the technology only, to do, only for, for gossip and innuendo and things that you hide behind a camera, and you, you hide behind a, a machine and you write nonsense, you attack other people and things. So we have to use the technology for a different reason. We can only use it to attack each other under pseudonyms. And if you don't like somebody, you go on Facebook and you attack them and, and you think that's a good thing and everybody's happy. But you didn't say, well, you know, I have so many likes because I attack. We have to use the technology to use it for our benefit. We have to use it and in, on many occasions, we can use it to make money. But we have to think. This morning, I just came from the sign of a ceremony of GPH, sign of a concession agreement um, for the work to start to improve the ports of Castries, Sufre, and Banan. And I've been saying to myself, there are more tourists who come to St. Lucia than people who live in St. Lucia. I don't know if many people have, have thought of that. More visitors come to St. Lucia than people who live in St. Lucia. Probably about nine times more. Have we ever thought, what can we do to make each of these people who come here as visitors, what can we do to make them live an extra $20 in this country? Have you ever thought of it? What can we do for all these visitors who come to our port, to our country? What can we do to make them leave an extra $20 apart from what they spend in the hotels and the restaurants? Have we thought of it? And this is the kind of thought I want to get from the young people in the, in the youth, youth Economy Agency. What can they do? And I think a, 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 a lot of things. Think about a lot of things. But we need to think about it. We need to think out of the box. We need to take chances. We need to encourage people to do things that no one has done before. We have to go where angels fear to tread. Thank you very much. I know I've been long. I could be longer, but <laughs> <laughs> I have another function. And I want to thank everybody um, for the the, the work that they, they do here. I understand the board, the, the staff. I just want to tell you two things. Just be flexible and transparent. And what you're doing is a service for the humanity and for the future of this country. I thank you.